What is up guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to look at placing light sources within lights to where it's pretty accurate, if not close and, and sometimes perfect. So it's kind of interesting because it's really difficult to do, you know, if you're trying to place it, but we're gonna get into that in just a second. If at any point in this video, you happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. It really helps me quite, quite a lot. So here we are, into motion. I've got a basic room, really nothing special going on here. Materials clearly clash. It's not great, but we have a bunch of different lights, and we're going to look at placing light sources because, unfortunately, light sources, while they may exist in Revit for what to what extent they do, they don't come into twin motion, and it's not pretty. So we have no light here, essentially, but we have a bunch of lights. <laughs> we need to get those light sources in. So what can we do? Well, let's first start looking at these can lights. So... Obviously, can lights, there's a light that comes up from there. That's cool. You can make a material that you can have, make it glow, whatever. If you have, you go into the family and at that point, paint that that back, that top face a particular material, a parameter, and then change that light source. And so you can add like a glowing material within Twin Motion. That's cool. Gives it a look, but it isn't adding like true light. And by that, I mean actually light sources. So we come in here, lights. These are all the light sources that we care about. There's a bunch to choose from, and it really doesn't matter. But let's go ahead and choose this one. And so really, it's all about placing, okay? So like what we can get close. So I can come in here and just, you know, pop it there. But like where is it really? You know, it's hard to tell. So this is where what my tactic, this, the whole point of this video comes into play. It's, <laughs> it's, it works to a degree, but it doesn't, exactly work the way you want it to like it's not going to be perfect in most cases in some cases it will be but we're going to get to how and you know where you can use this so if you notice here there's my can light and i want to actually move myself because that's not going to be helpful if i'm floating out there so this is good i'm i really care about not the statistics because whatever i want to care about the, the, I care about the transform. So we can see literally where this particular light is located within space, within twin motion. That's all cool. And you might notice you know, that I'm still in meters because even though I'm in meters, and my, when I come to my preferences and my units, I'm still in inches. That leads me to a number of pet peeves about twin motion. This is one of them for sure. The fact that I'm in inches, I wish this were feet, but whatever, I'm in inches. And the fact that all my positions and all my information is based on meters, which, I mean, I'm sorry, I, I just want inches. So why doesn't this change? Don't know. Seems like a simple conversion that they could do for us. But we're going to have to do that for ourselves, unfortunately. So at this point, we want to use this position. Now, this will save you a bit of time. And by a bit of time, I mean just very, very small portion of time. But we want to use this information, so we want to copy it. I can't copy this, unfortunately, and that is because I have chosen to link this via C and Twin Motion, the actual Twin Motion add-in for Revit. Now, if you use the Datasmith importer, then we can start to actually use this information. So I'm going to hide all of this information except this new light, and I want to go ahead and import Twin Motion. I've got a Revit that file that's, you know, of course, unnamed because why would I name it? Please name your Revit files. I'll click OK. I want to make sure and I go back to Revit and with Revit open, you can see I sent this via C and Twinmotion. I want to go to Datasmith now and then synchronize. And then we can go back to Twinmotion and we have all of it here. Now because this is a different model, I don't have my pretty materials that I spent an absolute long time trying to put together. And by that I mean not a lot of time. So I'm going to end up adding those in right now. And with those now added, we're working within our Datasmith file. So I don't care about this one at all. I can delete it, I can do whatever, doesn't matter. I will keep it hidden for now. So again, what we care about is the transform, specifically this positional information. So let's go ahead and click on this can and we can get all the information. And you'll notice because I'm in the Datasmith file, I can actually interact with this. Not only that, I can literally move it. You know, I can move this around and I have a lot more control, which is cool. Not that I need to do that, but I can. Okay, so this is the position that we care about. And again, what I've done is I've just added this, this lighting file. So let's go ahead and I'll bring this down to the bottom so it's easier to work with. 
let's click on this and we can see, well, let's, well, let's start by this. Let's literally match this information and literally copy this into the light. So this is going to get us one step closer and you'll see why we're just one step closer, not quite two. So I'm going to copy these in, into the light and we're just matching the light's position to this particular light, the light source to the light. We're going to copy this. And then finally, whenever I paste this in, where is it? Well, this is the part that I, this is, <laughs> leads me on to pet peeve number two. Pet peeve number two in, and this makes sense, so I can't be completely, you know, peeved off on this, but it's all based on the location of the host. And so let's say this light, where, well, where's this light actually hosted if we go in Revit? Well, going back to Revit, I click on this light. This light is not hosted on the ceiling. It is, but what I mean really is what, where is it hosted from? And so in this case, the constraint is level one. So, you know, this is kind of what we're stuck with. And so what is this telling me? Well, when I come back to Twin Motion, I can see, well, where the heck is this light? Well, this light is actually on the ground, which happens to be level one. So if you notice, this is actually the location of my light, and it's directly below it, except, so basically, I have the z-axis wrong. And so, you know, what do we do? Well, we bring in our handy-dandy feet to meters <laughs> conversion, which is unfortunate, again, that we have to do this, but we do for now. So here we go. So why am I using this? Well, I'm using this because I need to determine how far I need to take this light off the ground. Okay, well, I, you know, what do I do? Well, I just know, because I looked at it already, that this is a 10-foot ceiling. Well, what do I do? Well, I'm going to put in my 10-foot ceiling and get my meters, 3.05. Cool. I also just happen to know this and, you know, look this up too in the family. I know that this family is recessed by three inches. So I'll do 10.25. So this is literally what we need to add to our Z, Z value. So 3.12 plus 0.61, which is going to be our 3.73. So when I change this to 3.73, you might think, oh, okay, it's going to work. Well, it looks like it did, but it's actually way above it. And I don't know why this is. I've tested this out. When you move the ceiling up to 11 feet, down to 9 feet, for some reason, this value is still what equates to about 2 feet above where you meant to put it. And so what can we do? Well, we can come back here, and I'm actually going to do 8.25. And again, I really don't know why. So 2.51. So if we do our 2.51 times 2.61, we get 3.11. And look at that. That is perfect. That is perfect. So that, you know, that's what we want. So I will say, what, you know, what do we do here? You know, the best thing to do may not be to deal with the z-axis. It might be, let's go ahead and do another example. So I'll copy this. It might be to actually just place it somewhere else. It might be just to deal with the X and Y because you know what's good there. So let's do this. We can copy this here. 3.24. There we go. Paste this in. Cool. But get this value there. Obviously, now we need the Y. Copy the Y. There we go. So, okay. We're, we've got the X and Y, so let's say that's good enough. Then we just drag it up, you know, get get approximately the right place, which is right there. That's cool. That was quick, you know. You're literally copying the X and Y, and then you drag it to Z. So I again, please, if you have, if you're able to figure out the Z, let me know. My gosh, please let me know because I don't understand this. Why is it that they're different but the same? I don't know. Let's move on to another light. We've got these here, and. I'm just going to copy this light for the sake of this again, paste this over here. And I just want to, again, copy the location. I want to take this negative whatever and then come down to my light, paste this here, come back to my light again, 0 0.09 and then zero. Come down to my light, 0 0.09. So there we go. And then again, Z, you know, this was zero, so it was basically zero. And all this is telling me is that the host for the light 
is obviously it's based on this location. You're literally the cool part and the thing that you can like tell is that whenever I click on a light, let's say we click on this floor lamp, for example, if I were to place the light source at the exact location of the lamp, like the floor lamp, it would go there at the ground, which is not where the light is. So it's, it really comes down to where is like the host point of that particular family of that element from Revit, anything like it. And so that's really what we need to know. And we, well, we know what it is, but we want to have more control over that. So that's going to be on the Revit side. Unfortunately, this comes straight out of Revit. So it's, it's just referencing the, the level, which it's not on the level. It's just referencing it. So that's still where it places it. So really at this point, we just drag it up and you'll also notice <laughs> it's just kind of the way it is with something like this. It happens to be that it's not centered on the light source. It's centered on like the whole family or somewhere else. So that's a bad example. Well, it's a good example of something bad because then I still need to deal with, you know, where to put it. And you know, that this was still not hard to get it there, but it's just, it's not accurate. It's not hundred percent accurate. It's not where I want it. And that's unfortunate. And that's just kind of really what we're stuck with. You know, there's, I, I don't have a better answer for that. Um, so that's kind of the way that is. Now the floor lamp is probably the best example here. So if I come to my lights and you know, this is, this one's fine. Place that there. Obviously what we want to do is place this there. And so again, like I said, we want to match these dimensions. So let's copy this over to this light source there. Copy that. We got our light source again, paste that Y axis. And then there we go. I, I'll put it on the ground because it is on the ground. So well, what do we do now? Well, I happen to know that this light is five feet tall. <laughs> so if we bring back our handy dandy conversion five is 1.52 so i can literally type in 1.52 and i can actually get exactly where i want it to now what i need to do is hit tab and actually rotate this guy 180 because it's up <laughs> so look at this cool that's what we want like obviously you can fine tune it but this worked because i know the exact height and basically the exact location and everything for this light itself, which is nice to know. And so if you're able to know that, that's cool. One thing I could have done is if, let's say this is some generic family that I built, I can literally move it to where the the origin point within Revit, the point in which I make it, is actually at this very point where the light source is going to be. And that will save you a lot of time because you can just place a light and again, copy all of this positional information that we used. And that's that's cool. That's, that's kind of the point here. Now, you know, that leads me to my pet peeves again, which is like, why, why can't we change that location? You know, like there are other programs where you can move like the host point, the point in which this object moves. And that would be nice. So we could reposition it. Yeah, we can't do that right now. And that would be great. I wish I could wish there were other ways that we had more control and that we could literally just not copy each one of these individually, but just copy the position or match the position, you know, like a match properties or something like that. I'm talking about a lot of things that don't exist, but hopefully do, but that's all I can say. I hope, hopefully they exist. And finally, my last pet peeve, which you've probably seen before, a lot of times what I like to do is make you know, to make the perfect light. I, I made a, a video on this previously where I took something like this, where I have the light and then the light source, which is actually going to be this light source. I don't want it stacked quite like that. But I'll look at these two, you know, have them both. And I'm going to go ahead and make a new container. And we'll call this light because why not? That's what it is. And I'm going to make sure that I bring this out. And I've got this light within that light. And then that, again, that fixture. So they're both within this light folder and then I can add this to my user library which is cool this is nice and once I go to my user library we can see that there's light you know I've, I've done this before obviously you can see but there's light I get so I can place this wherever I want which is actually really nice but you'll notice like I you, you see where I have to place I have to place this on the ground to get this to be up in the air and that's just because where it's like hosted from and I wish there were a way around that I wish there's some other way that I could update that myself. But again, I have to place this on the ground. So what I, a lot, what I end up doing is having to place this and then move this up myself and then whatever. It's a mess. 
Um, but this also applies to replacing because maybe you decide, well, I want to replace this light with my family that I just made. Well, if I click replace, I can drag this in, which is cool. And then I can start replace. And you're like, where the heck is it? It left. It's gone. Well, it is gone. And then it turns out that it's somewhere else. And so if I hit F, we're, I don't know, we're out here. How the heck did we get here? We are flying. We are outside the building and everything. You'll notice what I did. I don't know why. This is my, literally my light that I brought in and replaced. I don't understand it. Like, it's just, I, I don't know. There's some sort of weird, like, offset or something that's has, I think, everything to do with where that particular point is, like the host point is. Because from there, then it's like, well, what do I do? You know, what, where did it go and why did it leave? Well, I think it has to do with that host point. I don't know how to change that. I wish I did. If you know how to do that, please leave me a comment because, my gosh, I want to know. It just makes sense that if I could edit that, I could have more control. I could literally replace lights like I want to. <laughs> it's just, it's the way it is. I don't know. You know, the positional information we have is just, it's just pulling data from stuff we don't have control over. So I'll be done ranting, but more or less, the moral of the story here is use these positional numbers change the x and y especially this is at least it, it's a good start use especially for like can lights and whatnot things that are pretty normal lights use the x y and get that positioned x y and then just move it up to the z to make it look pretty good and you can copy them around at that point you have the z let's say you have a bunch of these and i want to just copy it around you'll have the z already located so then just copy that light source and then again, paste in the new location or the second light's location, and you then get it matched perfectly in X, Y, and Z. So that can work. Not, again, not the best solution, but it's pretty dang close. So you can locate your lights pretty much exactly where you want to, but just know that it's based on the host point that we can hopefully change at a later point. That'll do it for this video. If you did learn something, which I hope you did, please demolish that like button. It really helps. That's all I got. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much for watching.